Hi, this is Charlie from Headwall Photonics. Uh, today we're going to go through a quick video on how to post-process your high-performance GPS data with Postpack. So to start, we're going to click on New Default Project in the upper left-hand corner. Give it a second, and now this Import button has become illuminated. We're going to click that. We're going to navigate to wherever our data is stored. So find that. I've dropped all my TO4 files that I've downloaded off of the High Performance GPS into a subfolder called APX here, um, and then I've dropped that folder into the uh, data directory that I downloaded from the sensor. So here's my APX folder. I'm going to click OK. You see here we have um, all these TO4 files are now populating, and you can see we have uh, a little over 30 of them, and they're all loading in right now. So we can go through that um, and import them once they're ready. So once we've loaded all these files in, I noticed that there were 30 something files there. Um, but if I go into the IMU GPS file from that flight, we can look at the start and stop time of the capture. So if I go in here, roll, pitch, yaw, latitude, longitude, altitude, timestamp, and then GPS, UTC, date, and time. So that refers to this column right here. So we were only collecting between 1425, and if you go to the bottom, 1446. So we only are interested in the files that coincide with these timestamps. So what I can do is create a new not used folder and drop in all the files that are outside of those times. So anything before 1425 not used and anything after 46 it's not used. So I'll only look at these seven files. Okay, I'll reload those in, and then now here we're only seeing seven files instead of the 30 something. So now I will select them all and import. Find base station. Base station. Once the RTX um, has finished processing, it'll flash with a horizontal and vertical sigma, and you say, Are the results acceptable? Uh, here they're 0 0.005 and 0 0.006, so I'd say that's pretty darn good, so I'll say yes. Uh, if you are using your own base station, um, instead of selecting one from that menu, you're going to instead import another file. We use the Trimble SPS 585, uh, which spits out a TO2 file. So we'll navigate to that. And then we will import this. Now if we look over here, um, this little ENG is our base station and it's 
right around where I would expect it because it's within our flight path and we put it next to where we are flying. Um, and then same thing, I could right click compute RTX coordinates uh, and then once finish set base station and then finish processing um, with that as my base station instead of the course reference station. After computing RTX coordinates, we're going to right click and then set base station. We see here we have 100% of fixed solution and 0% float solution, which is very good. Um, sometimes you'll get a couple percentage float solution, but as long as it's close to mostly fixed, then you're good. And you say OK. <coughs> now we're going to go up here and we're going to go to this GNSS inertial processor. We're looking at this stabilized mount where it says none. Depending on what uh, platform you're using, if you're using a gimbal, then you want to say model for this, and otherwise you say none. This was flown on a coal line, which is a hard mount, so we will say none. And then we're going to say run. It's giving me a warning that the base station is more than 20 kilometers away. This is OK. Um, Aplanix recommends that you use a base station within 100 kilometers, so, you know. We are 25 or 30 kilometers away, so we're over 20. It throws an error, but we're OK as long as we're less than 100. It's going to go through a bunch of forward and reverse processing. And then now it's finished. And if we zoom in on our flight path, uh, now we kind of see it still has the magenta -y color there, but there's also um, a bit of green. So the magenta is what it was originally, and the green is the newer uh, post-processed result. Um, so we see it didn't change all that much um, in latitude and longitude. There's a slight offset. Uh, but if we were to look at this from a different orient orientation, we would notice a slightly significant um, change in altitude, which is the biggest drift. So once we have that, then we're going to go to Tools and Export. We want to change this from ASCII to Custom Smooth BET, which is uh, what we call an SBET, a Smooth Best Estimate of Trajectory. For the Nano HP and the Veneer of the Colonite HP, instead we're going to select Custom Smooth BET UTC. I'm going to give it a file name and tell it where to export to. We'll find that folder where this data lives. Change the name. In the file name, it needs to have the string SBET somewhere. And then save. It's a little confusing. Once you click save, you'd think you're done, but you actually have to then go and click export for it actually to create that file. That's just saving the location. So we click export. And now if we open up that file, we see that our SBED is here. It produces a log and an OUT file. Um, and we want to then copy this into the data directory so that it can be used for hyperspectral orthorectification. At this point, you can either uh, close out, and then if you ever need to recreate this SBET, you can just generate it again. Or if you'd like to save it, you can file, save project as, and then give it a location to save. And then if we look. Now we have two more here, uh, a dot .postpack and a dot .postpack comma lk file. And this, if we ever need to revisit this flight plan or this uh, process file, we can just open it from here. And that's how you go through generating an SBET.